Our next presenter is uh, Mr. Ivan Lassa. Mr. Uh, Mr. Lassa holds degrees in civil engineering and surveying with an undergraduate studies in electrical engineering as, and is in charge of the Corrosion Research Laboratory of the Florida Department of Transportation. He has over 25 years of experience in the field of corrosion, specializing in con con corrosion control and corrosion prevention of reinforcing steel and concrete and the rehabilitation of infrastructure and marine structures. He has published numerous articles and technical papers related to corrosion and bridge structure re rehabilitation. Mr. Long. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, well, first of all, let me apologize a little bit. I'm, I'm a little bit under the weather since I'm catching a call. That little rain on Wednesday thing uh, looks like I'm catching a Texas flu here. <laughs> but uh, I'm going to give you my best shot. Uh, and basically, congratulations to the organizers. Seems that they really know what they were doing when they put this uh, schedule together. They, we're going to be talking this morning about substructures and cathodic protection. So they really, really left the best for the end, for last. So well, we, we love that. And basically, what we're going to do is give you a little bit of an introduction as to uh, we use cathodic protection in Florida. And uh, we feel very comfortable with it. Uh, but basically, we, we want to let you guys know how do we do it and what does it take to have a successful cathodic protection program for substructure. Let me ask an introduction. Uh, in Florida, we have our 8,000 miles of tidal coastline. And of course, anything that uh, we build near uh, that coastline is basically going to be considered that it's going to be a uh, location that is extremely corrosive. So with our 12,000 bridges uh, in our inventory, uh, many, many of these bridges are located within that coastal area. So uh, uh, it will be reasonable, and it is, it is a fact that the most common type of deterioration in uh, Florida mar marine bridges is corrosion induced damage uh, to the soft structure. And when we talk about damage to the soft structure, uh, these uh, damage, they really can get quite of a uh, complex as well as uh, uh, alarming. You know, for example, on, uh, on a pile like such, where we have uh, uh, lost so much concrete as well as reinforcement. Uh, assuming that this is uh, a typical astro bent four pile system, you can assume that that pile is supposed to carry like 25% of the life load and the, and the dead load for that span. Uh, when you have lost, when you lose probably 50% of your concrete to carry that, that is uh, something to be concerned of. And, and, and the problem on these uh, systems is that uh, normally the concrete spalls due to the corrosion, uh, but the concrete stays there. All that is reflects on the surface are some cracks. Actually, our inspectors, they really need to be very diligent on actually identify if it is just a crack in the concrete or it's a, a, a big delamination. That's something that we have to be very careful because if we don't uh, identify the problem early enough, you know, we might end with problems like this. Other situations are uh, something like on this cap over here, uh, where we have lost so much cross-sectional loss of the steel as well as concrete. You know, when we go to this particular beam here, when it deposits its, uh, uh, its load, uh, that particular uh, that cap is supposed to transfer the load to the most adjacent pile. So that reinforcement on there is essential. So those are the things that when we, we do see corrosion on the substructure, substructure component, but our inspector really, really need to be able to identify which corrosion problems are a little more critical uh, to, and, and essential to take care of right away than, uh, than others. And, and again, sometimes corrosion is not 
the initial uh, cause of the problem. On, on situations like this particular footer here, you can see that uh, most co uh, uh, probably the, the, the initial problem was some cracking on the concrete due to uh, probably some settlement or perhaps some deficiency on the reinforcement, so the column is trying to punch in through and cracks generate uh, on the concrete. However, and we need to remember this, that when we have these substructures located in these marine environments and we have some simple cracks, the chlorides kind of uh, immediately penetrate uh, through the cracks to the death of the reinforcement and corrosion starts very promptly. And once corrosion starts at the reinforcement itself, well, well then the, 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 the problem gets a little bit aggravated because now we have uh, the original problem, which it was either the settlement or the uh, structural concerns, uh, and now we have corrosion. We are losing cross-sectional area of the reinforcement. And in Florida, we, we notice that corrosion can happen everywhere. Uh, the column, on the, 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 the picture on the, on the right-hand side, uh, we, it's a more modern structure uh, built with uh, supposedly high resistant, high corrosion resistant reinforcement, meaning epoxy coated rebar. And we still have the same amount of corrosion. Uh, that it, it might take a little bit longer to develop, but we still see some problems. Uh, uh, this is a good example of how your location and the special conditions might create different uh, problems for different DOTs. For a post-recorded rebar, for example, I understand that have performed very, very well on, on superstructures, on decks, and on, on a little bit uh, colder climates than Florida. In Florida, we, we really have not been successful with, with that. So over the years, we did try several uh, means of conventional repairs to actually try, try to take care of these problems. So, uh, uh, like Jason early, uh, earlier showed, some, uh, it is, we have used typical pile jacketing, conventional pile jacketing, and it really doesn't matter. Uh, what we found out was that uh, it really doesn't matter how good of a repair you do, when the, the, the concrete that you have, the original concrete, so has already been contaminated with chloride, it's very difficult to stop corrosion, almost impossible. Uh, you can actually come up with the best possible jacket, and you still have some new corrosion developed somewhere else, or like the uh, photo on the, on the, on the right-hand side shows, corrosion just continues underneath the jacket. Uh, and we have tried all, tried all different types of uh, jacket encapsulations. So uh, this particular one here uh, was a small annular space jacket, and the, and the filler was epoxy. It was an epoxy material. Supposedly, uh, it was supposed to basically uh, not allow oxygen, so corrosion would not occur, but that never happened. Even when we do patching, uh, it doesn't matter how good of a patch you do, when the surrounding uh, concrete is already contaminated with uh, chlorides, the problem is that then the remaining chloride contaminated concrete becomes very anodic and starts corroding. So like on a case like this, we end up with a very good patch repair on the area, but immediately we started developing new spores around the patch. And, and that is very typical. So at some point we realized that we needed to stop beating the dead horse. It doesn't matter how hard we beat it, we're not going anywhere. Uh, <clears throat> so in, in the mid 80s, uh, Florida determined that conventional repairs were not adequate for the preservation of chloride contaminated structures. We needed to do something different. So today, uh, Florida approach to bridge preservation on chloride contaminated concrete is using cathodic protection. <coughs> uh, 
actually, uh, we use cathodic protection, and we need to remember along with the required uh, concrete rehabilitation. The goal of the program is to provide an extension of the service life for the structures as needed. Meaning that we don't have one single system that will that we use for every situation. <coughs> when we in introduce cathodic protection, we really extend the service life to whatever uh, the needs are. If uh, the first thing that we look at is we go to the bridge owner and say, well, uh, how, how many more uh, additional service life years are you are we looking for? Well, if we look for a, if we're looking for 25 years, there is no need to install a cathodic protection system that will provide 50 years of additional service life. So we kind of work with uh, with the owners, and and we try to tailor the cathodic protection system to to the actual needs for that bridge. So at this point in, in at this time in Florida, we have uh, over 100 bridges that we have provided with some type of uh, cathodic protection. Okay, so I'm gonna see, I know that we have some people in the, in the room uh, who saying, well, wh wh what is this cathodic protection? So, uh, and I'm glad that Jason basically uh, earlier on the first presentation discussed what is a corrosion cell for. Well, Cathodic protection is nothing else but a modified uh, corrosion cell. The only difference is that now we can control the anode, where the anode is going to be, uh, such that when corrosion occurs, it occurs on the anode outside rather than on the reward. So basically what we do is we do apply small amount of currents uh, to the reward to actually stop corrosion. Uh, basically what we do, we do have an electrical circuit. And basically, basically what, what we're doing, we, we are transferring electrons back to the reinforcement. So a cathodic protection system basically operates similar to a corrosion cell. It just uh, provides electrons, move electrons from the anode uh, the anodic area of the cell to the cathodic area of the cell. And basically what it does is, uh, in the only thing is that is it's a controlled corrosion cell. Now we know what is gonna corrode. So how we do it in Florida? So first of all, uh, it is implemented on a case by case basis. Uh, like I said before, uh, we, tailor the cathodic protection system to the needs of the, of the structure. Uh, we assume that this is not a one-size-fits-all item. And, and the systems are designed uh, based on, on the needs for the structure. The cause and magnitude of the corrosion activity is always determined prior to the design. We need to know exactly what caused that corrosion what is the corrosion uh, level, such that we can actually come up with the best uh, uh, particular cathodic protection system uh, for that. And we do that before, as, as per we are entering into the design phase for the system. And like I said before, uh, it is determined based on, on the needs of the, of the particular structure. Now, let me go back here because one of the things that I really want need to emphasize on is uh, we incorporate cathodic protection to the actual rehabilitation of the concrete and, and, the, and the river as needed. Basically, what I'm saying is that cathodic protection will not hold the bridge up. Whatever structural uh, deficiency was created, either loss of concrete, loss of uh, rebar, uh, cross-sectional cross, cross -sectional area. Cathodic protection, the only thing that does is stops corrosion at the level that it is. 
So if we need to uh, reinstall some of our uh, uh, corrosion uh, or the structural capacity, we need to take care of that. And basically what we do is we combine the implementation of the structural rehab with the cathodic protection. And this is some of the uh, type of cathodic protection that we use in Florida. Uh, I'm going to go through this really quick because actually the uh, prior presentation on cathodic protection actually mentioned several of those. And I know that we have another uh, presentation that is going to get into more details on to, uh, how to install cathodic protection. However, what we use the most is uh, as in press current systems, uh, we use the titanium mesh anodes. Uh, we do use it in different manners. We encapsulate this uh, anode uh, in shell grid. We encapsulate it in reinforced concrete. We actually use titanium mesh anodes for uh, conventional pie jackets. Then we use the galvanic systems also. Uh, we use thermal spray that uh, Jason described before. We use the galvanic sink. Uh, conventional pile jackets, and we use some submerged ball cannons. This is an example of a, a titanium mesh uh, in press current cathode protection anode. Basically what it is, is it's like a chicken wire, but it's made out of titanium. And we place that in direct contrast with the existing uh, concrete uh, surface. Uh, and then we just encapsulate it, and we just apply current through it then the current fl uh, flows from the anode through the concrete onto the rebar to produce the cathodic protection. This is an example of a pier that was provided with this type of cathodic protection. Uh, the area of the columns and the strut, we have a titanium mesh anode uh, that is encapsulated in shot grit. Now for the footers, because these are in direct contact with the water, we need a little bit, something a little bit stronger than shot creep. So we use, uh, uh, we encapsulate uh, on, on the footers, we encapsulate the anode in, in, in concrete, in structural concrete. And basically this is a, a good example. This is the titanium mesh placed against the, the existing concrete. Then some reinforcements are around it. And, and then we just pour it in concrete. For the newer system, we are kind of optimizing our designs as, as we go. Uh, we have been using non-metallic reinforcement. Now, basically, what this does is <coughs> it elim eliminates uh, on the previous when we apply then when we turn in the cathodic protection system current, we need to protect the existing as well uh, as well as the new reinforcement. On this one, because the the new uh, supplemental reinforcement with no need cathodic protection, basically all that we do is protect, uh, apply a smaller amount of current only for the existing. And, and, the, and the outside uh, reinforcement uh, doesn't need any, any cathodic protection. This is an example of some uh, pile jackets that we use cathodic protection for. Uh, this is not... Uh, it is a very standard product. I believe that Jason, uh, on the previous presentation, uh, this was shown, so I'm not gonna get a, a whole lot more, uh, spend a lot of time on it. Uh, we're gonna have, uh, uh, this is an example of how that titanium mesh is pre-installed uh, on the jackets. And uh, once the jacket is placed around the column or the pile, then it is filled with uh, grout and, and then, uh, uh, all the wires are connected to a rectifier, and then we apply current. Another type of anode that we have been using is a titanium mesh uh, ribbon. These are uh, small anodes that we insert in, in, into small grooves into the concrete. Then at the very end, basically, we just uh, connect all the anodes uh, and extend a wire outside the concrete, and we just apply the current to it. And of course, one of the things that I need to, to bring up is that <clears throat> whenever we use impressed current cathodic protection, that requires some uh, uh, power supplies. It requires like a rectifier or so, some kind of power supplies to produce that current 
that we push into that enforcement. Now, in Florida, one of the things that we do is for every Catholic protection system, in press current Catholic protection systems, we require to install some telemetry because we want to monitor that, the output and the performance of that Catholic protection as much as we can, as close as we can. So uh, as part of the installation, we require telemetry. So we know exactly uh, how much current is being applied uh, to the reinforcements. And if we need to make some, any adjustments, actually our equipment right now allow us to make the adjustments from the office. You know, if we need to increase, the, increase or decrease the current. Next, we're gonna move into uh, some galvanic anodes. And this is, uh, we have been using uh, for many years, arc spray sink. As a, uh, this was already shown in the er earlier presentation. Uh, basically what we do is we apply the sink to the concrete surface and we connect it directly to the rewire. Uh, that produces the current that is gonna cathodically protect the reinforcement. And uh, it's basically applied like uh, almost like spray painting. Uh, like Jason mentioned before, is we, we need to note on this that when we use this metallizing in concrete, we really don't want to use it in the submerged area or getting too close to the splash zone. Uh, basically, what you see here is as, uh, that, that cap, that will be as close as we get it uh, to the water, uh, preferably a little bit higher. We want to keep it dry because it's gonna self-consume really, really, really quick. Now we use uh, arc spray sink uh, to on structural steel also. Uh, it's the same type of uh, uh, galvanic anode that we use for concrete. We use it for steel. We use it as a coating. Uh, we can basically the way it works is uh, we have been using a, as a three coat system. Uh, and the way it works is uh, the metallizing just substitutes the sink rich primer on that. We have done it on applications uh, where they are shop applied, and we have situations in which we have done it in the field also. Again, we don't do this on every bridge. We just started working on this for a couple of the districts, uh, probably two or three years. We don't have too many bridges like that. We're still evaluating the uh, economical aspect of it. Uh, but the, uh, as well as the performance. But anyways, it is the same type of uh, uh, anode that we use for concrete. We can use it for structural steel also. The other type uh, of cathodic protection that we use uh, uh, very regularly is uh, galvanic systems uh, for pile and, and, and concrete columns uh, in the substructure. Uh, basically, what it does is it's a simple system. It's just a direct connection of the sink to the uh, to the reinforcement, and basically current starts flowing right away. Uh, the way it works is the the sink anodes are pre-installed inside the the jacket, uh, such that when the the jacket form is placed around the column the the concrete restoration as well as the cathodic protection it becomes one operation because once you uh, uh, place your your filler to replace the uh, defective concrete on the inside then the cathodic protection starts working right away also all, all that it requires is a connection of the reinforcement uh, uh, to the sink and like uh, Jason was showing earlier uh, we also use uh, our uh, submerged uh, anodes, and those are mostly uh, used just to protect uh, protection to the submerged portion. Uh, notice that uh, the reach of that, when it uses the, the water itself to distribute the current uh, throughout the, the structure, but uh, above the water, uh, that current only only reaches maybe 12 inches or something like that. Uh, in all reality, is we assume that the the only function of this is going to be for the submerged portion 
of it. If we need to go above that, we use uh, one of the uh, tidal area uh, anodes, such as the jackets or, so, or something like that. To finish with, uh, to, to conclude, uh, basically, uh, FDOT Catholic Protection Program was established in 1990 and uh, as an alternative to conventional repairs. We do know that conventional repairs on chloride contaminated concrete are going to be just short term band aids. If when you're repairing something that already have chlorides in it, if you don't take care of the corrosion problems, you're going to be there again in no more than three to five years. The program has been very successful. Uh, it has been a very successful bridge preservation effort. Uh, if I extended the service life of bridges in marine environments, like I said before, we have like 100 bridges throughout the state provided with some type of Catholic protection. Uh, and the Catholic protection program has proven to be a very cost effective means to preserve corrosion affected areas. Uh, and, and I'm gonna tell you guys, on, back in 1989, we started using Catholic protection on one of the bridges, one of the, our major bridges, with the intent to get another 20 years uh, out of the bridge. Now, the Catholic protection was, started, was implemented on uh, uh, every two years uh, program. It was not the entire bridge was provided with Catholic protection, only the most critical areas. And up to this point, uh, the system has been performing so well that the structure is still up. We actually have exceeded, uh, uh, significantly exceeded, the anticipated uh, service life extension. Now, we need to point that in Florida, the uh, Catholic Protection Program is maintained by a work unit that is just dedicated to corrosion and corrosion items. We work out of part of central office, and what we do is we provide our services to all the districts. As the district needs or they have any questions regarding corrosion or Catholic protection, we are there. We get involved anywhere from uh, whenever the districts identify that they might have a corrosion uh, problem, we go down there, we evaluate the structures, uh, we troubleshoot it, test it, and give recommendations. Uh, then we get involved during the uh, providing QA during construction, and then after the the, uh, the system has been installed, we take over, monitor the performance of the system, and report to the owners. Uh, well, basically that's all I have. I uh, really appreciate it. And I, will we have time for questions? We are doing that. I think we have to wait until after the, the yes. questions at the break. Thank you. Thank All you. right. Thank you. Thank you.